Hello everyone, welcome to our next series of lectures. So this will be our first lecture of our biology series. So these ones should be a lot shorter and uh, less time compared to our last uh, series of immunology. This is mainly a pretty brief introduction into biology. It's kind of a bio one course that you would take in undergrad, but kind of a light version of that. But yeah, this is a lot of stuff that will be on the MCAT and stuff as well. So it's pretty relevant information and it's essentially a really good basis for all the other stuff to look at. So yeah, so today we're going to be looking at our introduction to cells. We'll also learn what is biology, the properties of living organisms, evolution, what are cells, prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. So what is biology? Biology is the scientific study of life and how it works. Now it's pretty much one of the most exciting fields to be in. Research topics are progressing really fast and some serious, you know, contenders for some life-changing <laughs> research. And it's really interesting and there's so many fields you can get into. So when you go into your undergraduate degrees, keep an open mind to research and realize that pretty much anything you can think of you're interested in, there's likely specialists in that and you can specialize as well. So keep in mind, we're going to be looking at what is life and what makes something alive. So consider this. Let me move on. So what are the properties of living organisms? So here we have a bunch of pictures of a bunch of different living organisms. So we can see here, you know, a plant, different kind of plants, a penguin. But living organisms must consist of organized cells for order and complexity. They must contain heritable genetic information for reproduction, they must show growth and development, as you can see, it's a little example, reproduction, growth, and development. They must use or convert energy and matter for biological function, like they must have some form of metabolism. They must maintain homeostasis through regulation, and they must respond to environmental stimuli with a reaction to change, and they must adapt to environmental change with evolution through natural selection, which we'll talk about soon. So all living organisms adapt to environmental change by evolution through natural selection. Modern biology uses Charles Darwin, which you've likely heard of, theory of evolution through natural selection. This is the unifying framework. So how do we explain diversity and the unity of life? So this diversity of life is through evolution. So all organisms are capable of reproduction, involving duplication of genetic material with potential for errors to occur. This leads to differences among organisms that enable them to live in different kinds of environments and to, and to adapt to changing environmental conditions. So just for example, these mutations aren't always bad. So if we have a mutation, let's just say, for example, a polar bear, now they have white fur. That makes them better hunters. So the ones with white fur survived more and therefore that genetic pool proliferated. Again, through natural selection. So modern biological classifications of organisms are based on one, obvious similarities, and two, evolutionary relationships. So we categorize this in three domains and six kingdoms, but we'll see these have been expanded. So here are common ancestors of all organisms. We have our bacteria, archaea, and our eukarya. These, there's a general agreement on the highest level of classification, and all organisms can be grouped into these three domains we see here. And recent molecular research suggests there are seven distinct super kingdoms within the domain eukarya, which we'll look at next. So modern biological classifications of eukaryotic organisms has been revised using evolutionary relationships based on molecular evidence. So here we have our 27 kingdoms and our seven super kingdoms. So here are super kingdoms. So if you're interested, you can kind of find out, like, you think of humans or animals, what kind of fungi, and kind of class them yourself if you're curious. You can also look it up online, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. So, we know that life can be, there's diversity and unity of life. So this unity is explained through evolution. So, as diverse as life is, there's evidence of remarkable unity, so there's definitely... Tons of similarities between all organisms. So 
Life is essentially based on aqueous or water solutions. We all consist of six elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphate, and sulfur. We have similar macromolecules, including carbs, lipids, and proteins, which we'll talk more about in other lectures and metabolism. We all have RNA and DNA from the same nucleotides. Our genome is composed of RNA or DNA through replication. We have ribosomes with acting as sites of protein synthesis, which we'll talk about as well. We undergo rapid metabolic reactions, catalyzed by proteins, so these are enzymes. Oops. We have osmotically active membranes of similar structure, and we use formation slash hydrolysis of ATP for energy flow. So ATP is our adenosine triphosphate, and we're all cellular. So what are these cells? So again, all living organisms consist of cells that are structural, that have structural compartments, have an internal environment separated from the external environment. So here's our cell, here's our nucleus, here's our different organelles. This is the internal and our external environment. So here we can see we're clearly separated with our membrane. We use macromolecules to perform unique functions like metabolism and reproduction. So the current cell theory states that cells are the basic units of life and all organisms are composed of cells, and all cells are from pre-existing cells. So what are, the, what are these cells made out of? So the three most important distinguishing features of life on Earth is exhibited by all cells. So these are the, cell, the fact that cells can store and transmit information. So here, for example, we have our DNA. Cells have a plasma membrane. So here's a phospholipid bilayer plasma membrane here, which we'll talk about these in more detail later. And cells can harness energy from the environment. So here we have our animals in our mitochondria for oxidative phosphorylation. Then here's an example of photosynthesis in plants. So cells are classified to two types based on internal structure. So again, we had our three domains in our six kingdoms and our cell types. So here we can see bacteria and archaea are considered prokaryotes, while eukarya is considered eukaryotes. And these have some differences that we'll get into. Whoops. So, prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells lack membrane enclosed organelles, so that's very important. So, here you can see a prokaryotic cell versus a eukaryotic cell. There's also a big size difference here. While our eukaryotic cells have a membrane enclosed organelles. So, here we'll get to all these structures later, but you can see the different structures mitochondria and nucleus. Here you can just see the plasma membrane and nucleoid. So what are prokaryotic cells? So here's a better figure. So prokaryotic cells, again, lack this internal membrane, but they have bound organelles. The genetic, the genetic material is loosely organized in nucleoid regions. Here's our nucleoid. We have plasma membrane and ribosomes. So again, our ribosomes and our plasma membrane there and it also has a cell wall for support so here the cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan and outer membranes so we talked about in immunology lecture about peptidoglycans and certain things like lipopolysaccharide in the cell walls of certain bacteria again these are used by our immune system to detect these bacteria but they're also for the bacteria these are crucial for its structure so prokaryotes are very small and are less than 10 micrometers in size so here's a different uh, electron micrographs of different prokaryotes. So what are eukaryotic cells? Eukaryotic cells have an internal membrane-bound organelles. So you can see here the complexity is jumped up quite a bit compared to that. So here we have a plant cell and an animal cell. So animal cells are more relevant to humans, but we'll we'll, which we'll be focusing more on. But So these membrane-bound organelles include the nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, so we have a rough endoplasmic reticulum and a smooth, endo rough endoplas smooth endoplasmic reticulum, sorry. A Golgi apparatus, we can see here. It's a Golgi apparatus. A chloroplast in the plant, which you can see here. There's a chloroplast. A mitochondria for, for a lot of our oxidative phosphorylation. The vacuoles in the plants again. And our lysosomes which are quite important in degrading things. Again, we have an external wall, external cell wall, or an, in, or an internal cytoskeleton for support. And we'll get to these cells in much more detail later. 
So again, eukaryotics are larger than prokaryotics and are greater than 10 micrometers in length. So that was our very brief introduction to cells. I would recommend uh, going through the figures, but we'll get to each one of these functions eventually. But if you're curious, I would you can just go online and see there's diagrams that can tell you what each one does, interactive uh, figures. So yeah, I recommend that. And I'll see you in the next slide, uh, next presentation, guys. Take care.